But I'm here to let you know, don't despair. Whatever you're going through today, it's time to rise up. This is my assignment tonight to let you know it's time to rise up with the attitude of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were fully persuaded of the, of the promises of God and in their obedience to them. That's what true Christianity is. They did not bow down to a, a statue that the king had set up. How many are not going to bow down to the culture today? Bow down to what the news is saying? Bow down to what they want us to do? You know, some of you may have your own opinions about a vaccine, but I'm here to let you know I'm not. I'm not going to bow down to what this world is telling me to do. I'm going to stand firm on the word of God and know that Jesus is the breath of life. He is the captain of salvation. He's got nobody can snatch me out of his hands. You're still engraved in the palm of his hands. And how many believe today that he's still with us? And he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But that's what Christianity is. Knowing that even though I'm in a fire, God can deliver me. I might be tied up, but God can deliver me. And I believe, friend, that that's what Christianity is. It's not just positivity. It's not good vibes. It's not good energy. It's not just positive thinking, positive affirmations. It's not chanting mantras. It's not, you know, praying to with crystals. It's not praying to the universe. Christianity is Jesus. It's a heart of a life transform of the power of Jesus. Christianity is laying down your life, picking up your cross and following Jesus. It's praying to God, the only God, which is Jesus. I'm telling you today, Christianity is making the Bible your final authority. It's living your life according to this written word. I'm always telling people, we got to make this word the compass that we rely on for direction. If we, if we desire to become disciples of Jesus, this word must become a priority in our life. It's spiritual nourishment, and we need it to fulfill our purpose. See, so many Christians today, they want to walk with Jesus. They want to claim to be saved, but they're never in the word. They don't have a prayer life. They're not really fasting and praying in the spirit. And, you know, that was my life growing up, so I'm a witness of this. But when you taste and see that the Lord is good, you don't want to go back to anything else. When you get into this word, this word will get into you. When you start reading this word, this word will start to read you. And you'll start to fall in love with this love letter. Because it's, it's the word of God. Amen? But Matt, what are you saying? I might, I, yes, I'm going through a fire right now, but, but what are you saying? What, what is your message here? I, I'm here to tell you that God isn't going to save you from the fire. He's going to bring you through it. He's going to, I'm telling you, you might be here saying, Matt, I prayed that God would save me, but I'm here to let you know God is walking with you through the fire. According to the promises of Isaiah 43, he will walk with you through the fire. And when you walk through the fire of sickness and marriage problems and financial ruin, you, you shall not be burned, the word of God said. Some of you here expected the miracle to be outside of the fire. You thought God would save you before things went that far. But for you, I'm telling you, the miracle is in the fire like it was for those three Hebrew men. When Nebuchadnezzar threw those three Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, the Bible says that the chains broke and Jesus walked with them and they did not smell of smoke. I'm here to prophesy to you the, third, the fourth man man in your situation, the fourth man in the fire that you're going through in your life. He's not going to save you from it, but he's going to bring you through it. Because once you go through that thing, your character is developed. Your character begins to be strengthened. And when you walk out of that thing, you walk out not smelling like smoke and having a character that reflects the character of Jesus. See, sometimes we got to go through things because it molds us and shapes us into who God has called us to be. We were at a conference, my friends in the back, three amazing sisters. Uh, we had a conference, a virtual conference, what was it, two weeks ago? Yeah. And my buddy Norris was preaching a sermon, and, and he started saying, you know, we don't tell people up front what, they're, you know, what they have to sacrifice. That when you say yes to Jesus, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you won't go through some stuff. Right. You're going to go through some things. But he's with us through it all, yeah. and he walks with us. Yeah. How many have gone through some situations <laughs> but you came out alive yeah. how many look like how many don't look like what they've been through oh, man. <laughs> praise God for that and that's a testament that Jesus was with you through the fire that's a testament that you don't smell like smoke you don't look like what you've been through anybody with me somebody shout amen at me amen, amen. 
But see, as believers, we know that God is able to deliver. However, we also know that He does not always do so. Romans 5 tells us that God may allow trials and difficulties in our lives, again, to build our character and to strengthen our faith. How many, how many want their faith to be more strengthened like never before? See, we may not understand the purpose of our trials, but God simply asks that we trust Him even when it's not easy. Job, who endured incredible pain and suffering, he was still able to say, though He slay me, yet will I trust Him. Even though I'm going through something, I'm still going to put my faith in God. I'm going to still put my trust in God because I know that He is the King of glory. And may I submit to you tonight that God still has the church in the palm of His hand. I want to tell somebody today that we've still been grafted in. He's not forgotten about us. I'm often telling people His thoughts about you are more than every grain of sand in the world. He can look at a million people, yet you and I are the only one He sees. Isn't that incredible? God still has the church and grafted in. I'm telling you, he's got his hand upon us. And this year, I want to say in 2021, you will go higher. You will do all that God has called you to do. If the devil could have killed you, he would have done it back in 2020. Come on now, we got through COVID-19 and you're still here. You could have died in a car accident, but you didn't. Why? Because God was walking with you the entire time. And I'm telling you, He's still walking with us today. He's going to continue to walk with us through 2021. He's going to continue to walk with us through 2022. Tomorrow, next week, I'm telling you, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? And you may have never had an explanation for the things you had to walk through in your past. But I'm here to let you know that everything you've walked through was God getting you ready for your future. Everything you had to walk through was God refining you. He was taking out what didn't need to be there, burning off what was holding on to you. God is saying tonight, I'm purifying you, son. I'm purifying you, daughter. I am burning out anything that's not like me. I want to tell you that. Did you know that for every question, there's an answer? For every problem, there's a solution. For every illness, there's a cure. And for every adversity, the power of God is waiting to manifest in your life. What do you say, Matt? The very fact that you have a problem is a sign that God has a provision. Are you hearing me? And nothing can happen without God's permission. He'll never allow a difficulty unless he has a divine purpose for it. Oh, but you don't know, brother, this person hurt me in my life. Well, maybe God was removing them out of your life. Wow. <laughs> maybe God was making your circle smaller. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. But listen, the only way you'll understand that God is a provisional God is if you're confronted with a problem and you need provision and you need help. And he comes through all the time. He supplies all of our needs according to the riches of His glory. Anybody ever get confronted with a problem all of a sudden? You got something going on in your life. You see a fire burning and you know you didn't build it. But isn't it amazing that God can provide a way out even without your help? Isn't it amazing that before you tell God something, He knows what you're going to say, yet He still listens? Before you even ask, he knows what you're going to say, but he still listens. How beautiful is that? The God that we serve, he hears and he listens to us and he adores us and he longs to fellowship with us. More than we want to fellowship with him. Amen? Amen. God spoke to me one time. He said, provision will look for you. Provision will look for you. People look for blessings, and if you just focus on Jesus, blessings will look for you. Yeah. Matthew 6, if we seek first the kingdom of God in all his righteousness, everything else will be added unto us. Yeah. If we look to Jesus and we chase after him, instead of chasing after blessings, the blessings will chase us down. It, and it, it doesn't work the other way. So many people craving platforms and craving the mic and craving, you know, all, all these things, material things and blessings. And that's great. God will bless you. But if you would just shift your focus to him, you can't expect God to be the source of your peace if the world is your source of satisfaction. The Bible says that those who keep your mind stayed upon him, he gives perfect peace. How many want to experience that peace today? Hallelujah. 
But what are you saying? Provision will look for you. Well, the Bible says that the word of the Lord will not return unto him void. It would do that thing where it has been sent. And what am I saying? That means that God, when he sends out a word to bless you, that word will find you wherever you are. And it cannot come back to him unless it finds the person he sent it after. In other words, there's a blessing that got your name on it. What's for you is for you. It says the blessings of the Lord will overtake you. That literally means it will tackle you. You ever have a blessing tackle you? You just happen to be in the right place at the right time, and there it is, the blessings of God. I got three amens on that one. <laughs> Jermaine, you ever have a blessing tackle you? Come on, somebody. Anybody want a blessing to tackle them? Yeah. There we go. I saw Mike right there. Look at him. He's all like, yeah. Yeah, I told somebody one time, I said, I feel so sorry for God at times. I really do. Because he works so hard but gets little credit. I feel sorry for even the people that say they know him but they don't acknowledge him. They suck up his blessings. They drink up his water. They walk in his strength. They breathe in his air. And they act like they did it themselves. They, they breathe in his air. Those who don't even believe in God breathe in his air. Ain't that something? Just because you can't see air doesn't mean you stop breathing. Just because you can't see God doesn't mean you stop believing. You can't see the air you breathe, but you need it to live. Isn't that amazing? God is so good. We thank you for who you are. I'm just going to flow the rest of this time. Is that all right? We're going to flow. I'm, not, I'm only going to be a few minutes longer. And we're going to pray. We're going to prophesy. Anybody want to hear a word from God? Anybody need a fresh touch? A right now word? We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. How many know the devil leaves when you tell him to? How many know that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord? How many know that when you speak to that problem in your life, it's got to go by the name of Jesus? You know, people, people just allow the, the enemy to torment them. But why can't we as believers, I believe we're called to torment the devil. I believe with our lives, with our fruit, the devil gets mad. When you wake up in the morning, he gets mad that you made it. Some didn't make it, but you did. He gets mad. And how many want to crush hell for a living? Yeah, yeah baby, come on. The I, I feel in my heart that there's some things that have been tormenting some of you, and I believe God is going to break it today. I believe he's going to set you, he's going to break you free, and you're going to stay free in the name of Jesus. I believe it. I, I, I even speak now to fear. We command you to go right now. Depression and anxiety, we command you to lose your hold. We say 2021, they will walk and have a sound mind in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, for your power. We're just getting started tonight. I'm telling you, God's going to set some people free. He's going to, he's going to heal some bodies tonight. Hallelujah. We came here tonight to torment sickness. We came here tonight to torment anxiety. We came here tonight to torment fear, torment timidity. Every, every demonic spirit, every demon power that's been trying to get you to, to just uh, try to put things on your life to try to weigh you down from running this race called faith, faith God wants to remove it. And he wants you to run lighter. And no run, run a race carrying a heavy bag. How many believe that? God wants to set us free tonight. I believe it.